Hi, I'm Susie Willis. I'm a senior lecturer in speech and language therapy. I coordinate uh, clinical placements and clinical education, as well as um, teaching a lot of clinical skills. Um, by trade, I'm a, a pediatric speech and language therapist specializing in pediatric hearing impairment and cochlear implants. Speech and language therapy is one of these fantastic professions because it's about working with people and being with them in the context of their lives, with their families and their partners and their children. Um, and you're with them on a journey. And, you know, I came to speech language therapy because I, 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 I wanted to be with people and help and support them. I love being a speech and language therapist. I still practice now. Um, so my particular area that I'm passionate about is children with additional needs um, and children with hearing impairment. So um, I know sign language, um, but not all children with a hearing impairment sign. So um, it's helping them to learn to use spoken language. So that's my particular um, passion, but I, I love working with the, with the students um, and, and helping them be, well, maybe a little bit infected with my passion. Originally, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I want to work with maybe kids, so I thought I'll be a teacher. And I trained in America. Um, I was six weeks into my university course and thought, actually, it's, it's about helping people. It's not about education, about teaching phonics. That was not what I wanted to do. And then I kind of put myself on pause um, and thought, oh, and my next door neighbor, he'd had um, a laryngectomy from having throat cancer. And I used to go over and, and kind of look after him and communicate with him. Um, and, and, and that was like, you know, I really enjoyed that. I kind of reflected on those different points and thought, actually, I, I, want, I want to be the person that helps make the difference or helps people support and develop those skills from where they are to where maybe they want to be and we're together. One of the proudest moments is when one of the children, his mom contacted me when he got this fantastic job and she rang me and I hadn't heard from them in probably 10 years. Um, and it was that moment of being on the phone with her and her saying, you know, God, what a difference. You know, without you, he would never have been able to do this. And I, you know, at that moment, I, it wasn't I just said to her, which is what I believe, which it wasn't me. It was helping them help their son. Well, I think Manchester Met in itself is quite unique. We're kind of, um, I would like to say, one-stop shop in the sense that we, um, the staff team, all have clinical specialists, like I'm pediatric hearing impairment and cochlear implants, and but I also do research, so I have a PhD. I still clinically practice, so there's no divide between um, research and clinical practice. We kind of, we, we bring it all to our teaching and our lectures. Like obviously we have the resource center um, and lots of uh, toys and activities and um, assessments that the speech language therapists use that are here for the students. And we have our own designated rooms, which is absolutely fantastic. We use a lot of case-based learning, real people, real families, real cases. And that's a really, um, in, I don't know, an exciting way to learn. It helps embed that theory um, and that practice. So at Manchester Met, we have got a lot to offer and lots of the practice educators who will supervise students on placement are former students of ours. I think the future of speech and language therapy looks very diverse. So I think we can be a lot more creative and I think the future is exciting because our evidence base is, is developing and getting bigger and bigger, but also the, that the diversity of our, our clinical skills. We're, we're developing skills that we didn't even know we, we needed to develop. Um, and that's to the benefit of the families. 